Good morning. Yeah, it is a joyous day today. I'm not the MC, don't worry. <laughs> I just wanted to make you aware that the dignitaries are coming from the holding room. And when they arrive, they'll give me an indication. I would expect you to rise. And they are about to, to enter until they are seated here. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our minister, premier, deputy ministers, judge, and remain standing until they have taken their seat. Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies, you may take your seats. Um, if ushers can assist us, if there are still people in the hallway to, to come in and start filling up the, the left side of the auditorium. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Doc Mashaban. I'm the Director General of the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Um, I'll be the program director for the day on this occasion of the celebration of the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the Special Investigative Unit. May I request that uh, we take to our feet as we sing the national anthem.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. Honorable Minister for Justice and Constitutional Development, Honorable Ronald Lamula, the pr Premier of the Province of Gauteng, Honorable David Makura, the Deputy Minister for Justice and Constitutional Development, Honorable John Jeffries, Deputy Minister for Correctional Services, Honorable the Holo Minister, Dilis uh, Honorable Members of Parliament who are here, uh, and other excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to this occasion of the 25th anniversary of the Special Investigative Unit, as we've already mentioned. We have a very short program, and I'll request that we stay focused and attentive as we run through the program. Uh, it will not be taking us long being here. But it is a very, indeed, an important occasion for us to acknowledge the work that the unit under different uh, leaders have conducted over the past 25 years, and most recently, I think the past five years in particular. Uh, the SIU has been doing a great work, and I think from the time it was set up, none of us would have thought that our nation will have to go through what we currently are going through, particularly in relation to the work that they have to do, forensic investigation, of corruption, maladministration, and malpractices generally in public sector, as well as the conduct of civil litigation. I think recently the establishment of the special uh, tribunal has added an important impetus as well to the work that the investigative investigation unit, the SIU, has been doing over the years. And we can only wish them well as they proceed as well with the work, particularly now, even after the release of the report of the State Capture Commission that was headed by the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. Ladies and gentlemen, without taking much time or without uh, further ado, I would like to invite uh, the Honorable Premier of the Gauteng Province, David Makura, to come and give us a welcome address. Honorable Premier, I invite you to the stage. Thank you very much uh, to our program director, Advocate Mashabani, uh, the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Minister Ronald Lamula, and Deputy Ministers Ngosi Patekile Holomisa and John Jeffries, the Honorable Chairperson uh, of SCOPA, Honorable Sengwa. I also want to acknowledge in our midst. Uh, Judge Mudiva from the Special Tribunal, the DG in the Presidency, DG Pindile Baleni, the head of the Special Investigation Unit, Advocate Endim Tibi. Uh, we gathered here, uh, Advocate Mtibi, uh, to celebrate a great milestone of the Special Investigating Unit the former head of uh, the Asset for Fetcher Unit and the Special Investigating Unit, Advocate Veli Hofmeyer, uh, and the, delig the teams from the various institutions, including the NPA. I was also told that there are several former heads, uh, former heads of uh, the SIU uh, and former heads of something. Uh, so I want to, act, if you are a former head of anything, <laughs> or a current head of something, I acknowledge you. Because there are many heads, some don't want to be known that they were present. So I acknowledge you. And the senior government officials, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a distinct honor that I've been asked today to welcome you all to this event that marks the 25th anniversary of the Special Investigating Unit of our country. Given where South Africa is 
Today's occasion is a remarkable milestone that would qualify to be called Red Letter Day. Red Letter Day because of the significance of what we are celebrating here. The fight against corruption is one of the cent four central themes South Africans identify. I won't say what are the others. I see the head of the GCIS here. Uh, recently they've been conducting surveys and, and the, the key, the, amongst the key issues, unemployment, uh, the central themes, unemployment, poverty, uh, crime, uh, corruption. Uh, there are four central issues that feature and corruption is amongst those top four issues that South Africans place. Uh, recently, the energy crisis is amongst those. Uh, so, those. So we are really, really celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Special Investigating Unit because this institution, this agency, is very central to addressing uh, South Africa's topmost concerns from a citizen's perspective. I know the president uh, was, uh, was going to be here, and one of the things I would have said and I want to say is that uh, one of the, the objectives that President Ramaphosa set for himself when he became the president of our republic in 2018 was the rebuilding and renewal of the institutions of our democratic state. Uh, some of these institutions of our democratic state had lost their authority and effectiveness and efficacy, principally due to capture by organized crime, and they got derailed along the way. They existed only in name, but in real terms, they were just saving the cause uh, of organized crime. So, uh, so one of the central issues that the president set as a uh, a defining feature of his presidency was this question of rebuilding and renewal of the institutions of our democratic states to give back their teeth so they can stand, do the work that our constitution requires of them or mandates them to do without fear or favor. Um, so the rebuilding of the special investigating unit and its spectacular successes over the last few years is a very strong indication that it is possible to rebuild and renew the institutions of our constitutional democracy. Now, I know that uh, there, are several, there are several formats here, but I must say that uh, Advocate Mtibi, uh, I haven't worked with, as the Premier of Gauteng, I've not worked with the former heads because I was not Premier before. But when you came in, uh, in 2017, one of the things we, we did, led by our DG then, uh, Pindile Baleni, we struck a, and structured a memorandum of understanding between the Gauteng Provincial Government and the Special Investigation Unit. And it was at a time, it was at a crucial time, because the Special Investigation Unit was just one of those institutions that undertook investigations and reports never came out of those processes. So there will be investigations and investigations, you don't know what came out of that, and uh, there's no consequence management out of that. Uh, so we, we met, we were troubled at the time by just one issue, le medical legal claims. Uh, and medical legal claims, as some of you would know, Minister Lamula would know, uh, it's a big issue that eats up our health budget. There's organized crime there. Uh, law firms and health professionals in collusion. Uh, the state is ripped off large sums of money. So one of the first tasks in that MOU was we asked the Special Investigation Unit, they just returned from dealing with similar issues in the Eastern Cape. We asked them to look at investigating this matter of medical legal claims. So they seconded, the MOU was also about secondment. So they seconded, they placed people in the Houghton Department of Health permanently there to help deal with a medical legal claim, investigate. Uh, 
But we also said to them there are other areas of, of criminality in the provincial government. Uh, lots of unlawful things happening, Ill irregular procurement and uh, uh, corruption associated with infrastructure projects, some of the big budget departments. So the MOU with the SIU was also to look at that. The, that the SIU, we would not just wait for proclamations done by the president. So we said we will also get, when we get allegations and we will get whistleblower information, the people seconded permanently from the SIU will immediately deal with those issues. That's what was in the MOU. We signed that in 2017. So I am celebrating 25 years of the Special Investigation Unit, not from the point of view of just theory, but from the work we have done with you in the past five years, from 2017, and how that work has really, really turned around, even though we still have many challenges. But out of that work, I want to share with you as we celebrate this 25 years today, just that after the, the, uh, in a period of five years, the SIU was able to help us crack down uh, on uh, specific areas, there are departments, there are departments that are, are known uh, as uh, high-risk departments, the big budget departments, where there's the most of the budget is, where infrastructure is. I won't mention their names today because they are in a report that in my conclusion I'll refer to, a report we've just released. Uh, but the Special Investigation Unit's work with us over five years has been tremendously impressive. It has been remarkable because out of that, firstly, we have been able, through their investigations, there's consequence. Every in Special Investigation Unit report, in the, the SIU report comes uh, when they do a referral. We have a system now that there's consequence management. Every SIU report does not sit somewhere and pile up there in dust. It puts into a system, into a process, the relevant department, Honorable Shengwa, that relevant department, the officials are disciplined. So the first thing they help us do, they have helped us to prepare strong cases for disciplinary, uh, instituting disciplinary cases. And we have been able to fire officials from government out of that work, out of those investigations. Because before, before, and before 2017, I used to say to DG, we have these forensic investigations by law firms and audit firms. At the end, they have a disclaimer. They say, they investigate and write a report. You have paid them, Honorable Shengwa, to do the investigation. But they submit a report that says, you cannot use this report. This, you know it. You are all here. They say this report cannot be used uh, for this, for that, for that. Why do I appoint you to do a forensic investigation if I can't use it to discipline people and if I can't use it to open a criminal case, if I can't use it in court uh, to ensure that those responsible are prosecuted, if I can't use it at the special uh, tribunal, why should I pay for this forensic report? So we said so in that MOU, we said we want, and we want the SIU to go all the way with us. We want civil claims, civil recoveries. We want the money to be recovered. We want officials, you come with us to the disciplinary process. You are the investigators. Come with us there. We want to fire those who do wrong things. You can't say our report cannot be used uh, in disciplinary processes. So I must say that as we speak today, as I welcome you here, part of the celebration in Gauteng we have is that this SIU, the Special Investigating Unit, every disciplinary process that comes out of their investigation has led to a successful firing, and I want to say firing of officials. Where matters would not require firing, there has been consequence management. Others... There are processes that ended up in the special tribunal. I must say that uh, even there we have, uh, because to show that the SIU has teeth, I've been watching the special tribunal cases very closely to say the business people and the officials, we need the money to be recovered. If the state has lost the money, so the, the SIU has been able to show in the special tribunal that they prepare properly. So 
So I want to say, therefore, that uh, we in Gauteng celebrate with you, the SIU, with the, with the ministry, uh, with the department, uh, DG. Uh, this, this institution has gotten its teeth back. Uh, and that's why I say there was a period where we were very concerned. All state institutions, they just investigate, no consequence, nothing comes out of it. But in, the, in, in this uh, period that I've been premier, at least from 2017, I can say in Gauteng, we have just released a report on the 31st of May. We have released a report that's called the State of Ethics, Integrity, and Com Combating Corruption in Gauteng. The story of the SIU is told in that report. So in that report, part of the story of the SIU is told. How many cases they've dealt with in Gauteng, what has happened to the officials uh, and businesses that were involved in unlawful and corrupt dealings. But we, in that report, which we released on the 31st, we also tell a story of how we are working with other agencies. Uh, the Public Service Commission uh, is one of those, the Auditor General of South Africa, the, public, uh, the Office of the Public Protector, uh, also on vetting, on vetting and lifestyle audits, the State Security Agency, working with a whole range, a gamut of institutions. So I want to say to you, uh, Minister Lamola, um, and I must, I must reveal that I have sent you that report, the State of Ethics, uh, Houting, uh, State of Ethics, Integrity, and Combating Corruption. Uh, and I wanted to say uh, uh, to, to this uh, important uh, uh, gathering here today when we mark the Special Investigating Unit's anniversary, to say that of all the things we have done in in dealing with uh, ethics, integrity, and really, really putting in place preventive measures, detect detection measures, but also consequence management measures, uh, department by department in Gauteng. One of the key areas of concern now are prosecutions. So we are stuck uh, on, at that, on that front. So civil recoveries, we now can see them. So the, the, the special tribunal judge, the special tribunal is working. Uh, but we are stuck on criminal cases. Uh, and one of the reasons we are going to be meeting with Minister Lamula on uh, is to say that, uh, so the criminal justice system, the, le the rest of the value chain of the criminal justice system, including the NPA, uh, on cases that have have been coming out of the Houghton provincial government and the municipalities. We want to see consequence management. My last word to you is the following. Fighting corruption is not child's play. You know it's sitting here. Fighting corruption is not child's play. Individuals, institutions that are truly committed to fighting corruption know that, that, that it comes with a great deal of risk for persons who are involved, because those involved in, in corrupt dealings uh, are organized crime, and they are not playing. They will do everything to go for those, the officials, the in individuals, institutions, to go for you, uh, to go for those in government who genuinely are committed to stopping the rot. They'll do everything. Uh, if you want to know that story, read a book, uh, called Fighting Corruption is Dangerous. I like citing that book, uh, written by the former finance minister of Nigeria and the current DG of WTO. Uh, I like citing that book, uh, and I carry it with me. It, uh, it is in my bag there. Uh, it, I carry it with me. Okonjo Iweela, Ngozi, Dr. Ngozi. Uh, she says fighting corruption is dangerous. Fighting for corruption is dangerous in this sense that those who do it must do it with their open eyes, with their clear conscience, that doing otherwise is not an option. Allowing corruption to thrive is the destruction of the dreams of our democracy. The, our forebears who fought, sacrificed everything, to ensure we are a democratic country, and the future generations, our children and their children, future generations who want to inherit a properly functioning democracy, a thriving democracy. 
cannot do so unless we stop the rot now. Uh, and it's a risk we must take with our eyes open like all other risks. It's dangerous because the criminals will go for you. They'll threaten you. They'll do all kinds of things. They will uh, put all kinds of threats. They'll try and smear you. If you read the Okonjo's book, they even kidnapped her mother. Uh, just a few months after she was the Minister of Finance, they kidnapped her mother because she was closing the taps. Uh, she was go closing the taps and organized crime as I call. They said, we will fight back. So there will be a fight back, uh, but we, we don't have an option. The, the fight must be on uh, because otherwise our democracy and the future of our country and future generations will have nothing to inherit because corruption, like many other most destructive forces, can destroy even the best country in the world. So yes, there will be threats, and they will, be, including personal threats and so on. But it's a struggle. A strug every struggle involves threats. We must face these threats with our eyes open because corruption cannot thrive in our country. So we celebrate the SIU, but we, th we celebrate the fight uh, against one of the scourges facing our country as we fight other scourges. Uh, so Minister Lamula, you have in Gauteng a partner uh, to, we will implement all the reforms you want to introduce. We need all the reforms, lifestyle audits. The institutions must be properly coordinated and there must be consequences along the value chains. All institutions must function. Staff coming from the Zondo Commission must be acted upon. The NPA must bite, must get back its teeth. All these institutions, coordination must be there. So, so thank you very much. Uh, I was not meant to make a speech. I was just meant to welcome you. And you are welcome. <laughs> thank you. Indeed, Honorable Premier, uh, you have welcomed us. I don't think there will be anyone here among us who will say they don't feel uh, warmly welcomed. And I think if there was any among us who either was not sure what this occasion is about, I think we are all now clear. I've always wondered in a flight you are going to Cape Town, they have to still explain that this flight is going to Cape Town. And I always wondered, but how come but one day they explained that we were taking off to Heathrow, London, and someone stood up and said, no, I'm in a wrong flight. Then I then understood why it is very important that they explain that this flight is going to this particular destination. And I think, Premier, you have, you know, aptly done that. So all of us here are clear why we are here. I was earlier remiss in not uh, recognizing uh, the Director General of Government, yeah, uh, Pindi Baleni, who is the chairperson of the Forum of South African Directors General, and my colleagues from the Justice, Crime Prevention and Security Cluster. Um, the National Director of Public Prosecution is represented here by Advocate uh, Nomvula Mohatla, who is the Deputy National Director of Public Prosecution, and the Director General of State Security is also represented by Ambassador Bam here, and says Pumla as well from Forsad is here, the Director General of GCIS, and I've also seen the Director General of the Department of Public Service and Administration, and the Acting Public Protector Advocate Koleka Naleka is here. So I welcome you colleagues. Um, I'm not only singling them out, but uh, as Premier was saying, the Directors General are also part of endangered species. So whenever we have an occasion, we have to take the occasion to acknowledge the good work they do, even in the fight against corruption. I think, I think DG Baleni, we will learn a lot from what Houting, from what the Premier has, has been saying, has done in terms of dealing with the SIU reports, and I think we can replicate it national. There's a lot of work, investigation that is done in national departments, but then the the proportion of the outcomes and the consequences is lower than the work that is being done in terms of the, the proclamation that the minister and the president uh, approve on an annual basis. So I think as, as we start a journey to the 50th anniversary, the jubilee anniversary of the SIU, we, we can learn a lot from uh, what Gauteng has already done. Ladies and gentlemen, as we proceed um, to the next item, which is the unveiling of the new logo, 
will ask the band uh, to, to give us an item as the team that will do the unveiling comes forth. And immediately from there, I'll request that uh, Brakei Zakhanyako deal with the idea behind the logo without me having to come back and ultimately the viewing of the video. The band? Okay, so, so they can do the unveiling before the band. Okay, whoever is going to conduct it, they can proceed. of the Special Investigating Unit. Looks like it's something worth celebrating. Let's celebrate. Something worth celebrating.
Thank you, thank you very much. We, I'll, I'll ask the, 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 the Honorable Minister, Deputy Ministers, Honorable Premier, the Director General here, to, and, and Advocate Mutibi, the head of the SIU, to step down and proceed to that sedan's vehicle there, to unveil it as part of the unveiling of the new logo. That's a Toyota Corolla 1.8. Why, why are you laughing? We'll try and find money from. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you know, the organized criminals are always advanced. They, they, they drive on the 550i, 5 series. Right? So, so when you are coming with Toyota Corolla 1.8. <laughs> Yeah, but, but we'll do that. We'll make sure that we get a car funding and get, um, get proper five series. You'll see them on the highway. <laughs> okay, may I ask Brakeza Zakhanyako to come and deal with this item? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. DG will take you on your offer. I always take advantage of such statements. We will get the cars that we want. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, Deputy Ministers, Premier, DG, Head of the Special Investigating Unit, for my heads, other DGs, uh, my responsibility here is to come and explain 
the rationale be behind this new logo. Can I ask the, yeah, to present, to start it, uh, here, stop it here. This is the old logo of the Special Investigating Unit. And all of you know that with this logo comes the payoff line that said, poised to strike against corruption. And we were looking at it and with the people that were asking us a question to say, how long are you going to be poised? You have been poised for too long. And we said to them, yes, now we are no more poised. We have moved a step further. Can you move it forward? Stop it here. Yes. We decided to go on a this kind of a, a, a full logo purely to indicate that the wheels of justice will be moving and they will get you wherever you are. Because if you look at the previous one, you could see it was a half moon. And we decided to, we want to say we will go the full circle and make sure that you, you, we deal with you wherever you find yourself, whoever you think you are. Next. And then there is our name, and then we added at the bottom, you can move, we added South Africa there because we wanted to avoid a situation where we have got other people who call themselves SIU. You know them. They call themselves SIU somewhere, and we said, no, we are the SIU of South Africa. When we go to international forums, we don't want people to be asking, where are you from? It must be very clear when they look at our logo to say we are the special investigating unit of South Africa. And we, we wanted it embedded into our logo. Next part. We then decided not to change the cobra. The cobra looks exactly the same as the one that we had. But because the one that we had was poised, we said no, we need something extra. And we then, like the previous was saying, we made sure that it had teeth. It can bite. And you will see now when they press, the logo then has teeth. There you go. <laughs> it shows that it is biting now. And then the teeth are there and the venom is coming out very clear to show that we are coming after you. And now our payoff line says striking against corruption because that's exactly what we are doing. We are no more waiting. We are now doing it, as the Premier said. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you see, Advocate Ville of Mayor, you were always poised, poised, <laughs> but there was no striking. <laughs> Now they are striking. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll call to the stage uh, Advocate Andy Mutibi to hand over the memoir coffee table book to the minister. Who is doing that? Oh, there's a choir coming. Oh, okay. If you can come back quickly as they prepare to bring that book.
thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Um, at this stage, I would like to invite uh, our Honorable Minister. Uh, Minister, at this stage, uh, we would really want to present to you uh, what is called a coffee table book. Uh, but uh, those who take tea, it could also fit as a tea table <laughs> book. Um, so, Minister, I'm just going to take it out of this uh, paper bag. Uh, you'll see, Minister, it's written celebrating 25 years uh, of striking against uh, corruption. Uh, this book uh, narrates the story uh, and the good story of the, of the SIU. Uh, it's still covered uh, as uh, in, in, in the plastic uh, and minister who will ensure that it's unwrapped at an appropriate time uh, so that uh, you can have the opportunity to go through this good story of the SIU. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, we hand over the, the book to you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Minister. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. I see uh, the, the JCPS uh, continues to arrive. Uh, we have uh, the head of the Hawks, uh, General Libya, who has now joined us. We welcome you, General. And uh, we work hard every time and at the end of every year. We want to be told that we have administered uh, the, the funds of the state in accordance with the rules. And uh, so let me sing for my supper. Uh, I would want to be unqualified by acknowledging the presence of the Auditor General of South Africa, says Sakan Malulek. I'm, I'm Kela, says you are welcome. And uh, I hope I've done enough to get unqualified. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> I want to invite Advocate Mutiri to come and give us a message as the head of the Special Investigative Unit. Uh, once more, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, uh, Director General Dr. Mashawani of the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Um, I'd like at this stage to uh, acknowledge and honor our Honorable Minister, uh, Minister Ronald Lamula, uh, the Honorable Deputy Ministers, Deputy Minister John Jeffrey and Deputy Minister Holomisa. I'd like to also just uh, uh, honor at this stage the Director General uh, in the Presidency, uh, the Honorable the Premier of Gauteng. Uh, we are really uh, honored to have you uh, uh, be, be present the Honorable, the Chairperson of SCOPA, Honorable Sengwa. I also want to acknowledge the uh, Special Tribunal President, uh, Judge Mudiba. Uh, and at this stage, uh, all my colleagues in the ACTT, but I want to in particular acknowledge the chair of the ACTT, General Dr. Advocate uh, Libya. Uh, you're welcome, uh, General. Uh, can I also welcome, uh, or well, uh, acknowledge the Auditor General of South Africa. Uh, you're welcome, and thank you very much. The Acting Public Pro uh, Protector, or the DGs that are here, um, uh, DG, GCIS, uh, welcome, uh, Sis Pumla. 
uh, the DG of uh, DPSA. Uh, they've already really been uh, acknowledged. Ambassador Baum from SSA, uh, my sister from, uh, from NPA, uh, Ms. Mukhatle. I specifically want to really just say, uh, Honorable Minister and Honorable uh, Premier and DMs, we work very closely, and as the National Anti-Corruption Strategy says, that the fight against corruption is a whole of society responsibility. So we do have uh, the representatives of the civil society uh, that are with us. And without really naming them by name, uh, I'd really want to acknowledge and really continue to encourage them that they should continue to collaborate with government, with us in the law enforcement agencies, and to ensure that we, we reach the goals that we would like to achieve. Part of that uh, whole society, uh, we've got the business representatives in the House, um, uh, Honorable Minister. Um, we've got various business representatives. Um, but Minister, uh, as we always say, that uh, we shouldn't just be saying we're fighting corruption in the public sector. We're also fighting and ensuring that the private sector also comes on board. And we really acknowledge uh, their, their presence here. But in particular, without really isolating, uh, the big business is behind us as we fight this fight against corruption. And we are honored to have the Managing Director of the Coca-Cola South Africa Beverage, uh, Mr. Vela Piratsefula. Uh, they are behind government as, as we uh, wage this fight against, against corruption. Uh, colleagues, uh, and these are the celebrants uh, from SIU, uh, I would like to also just say uh, a big thank you uh, Without you, this organization would never have ever achieved uh, the goals that we have. Uh, my colleagues from the Department of Justice, Department of Correctional Services, I'd like to also just acknowledge the chairs of the SIU governance committees. Uh, we've got various uh, governance committees. As we started on the journey to execute the new strategy, we said, amongst others, we have to ensure that we have clean governance in the organization. And <clears throat> I would like to acknowledge the presence of the chairs. But in particular, I see uh, uh, the chair of, uh, of the audit committee, uh, who's uh, in front uh, here, uh, Ms. Uh, Nandi uh, Madiba. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, other chairs of uh, risk committee and the chair of human capital, uh, they, they, they are invited and I really uh, want to welcome them. Colleagues, I also want to welcome members, uh, uh, everyone who is in the room, and just say uh, in my few words that I'm going to say now, and DG, I'll really uh, respect time, uh, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Uh, uh, if you can help me uh, as, as, I, as I give this uh, few words, can you please flip, uh, flip the presentation, please? Uh, uh, if you can just uh, flip the whole, the whole slide. Uh, this, this slide acknowledges uh, all the previous heads. Of the, of the Special Investigating Unit. Uh, as you can see, uh, it starts off uh, with, uh, with Judge Heath uh, from the onset, and in fact, most of, the, uh, most of some of the other colleagues in the, in, in the room here uh, have really started uh, when the SIU started uh, when, uh, with, uh, with Judge Heath way back in 1995 leading up to the promulgation of the legislation 
Uh, as you know, this started really as a Heath Commission, and it evolved, it evolved, and the legislation was passed in 1996, uh, Special Investigating Units and Special Tribunals Act, uh, 74 of 1996. And then, then we have, uh, uh, in, in 2002, uh, we've got uh, uh, Advocate Willi Hofmeyer, he's with us here. Um, uh, he also played a very key role in ensuring that you know, the SIU uh, continues on that trajectory. In the box there, which I really won't go through, it's some of the uh, work that they did. Uh, and then as you go through this, this road, you can see uh, there's uh, uh, my sister here, Advocate Nomvula Mukhata, who also was uh, at uh, SIU as the head there. And you can see some of the activities, key activities uh, that we have noted under her, under her leadership. And then uh, you can see the uh, Advocate uh, Vassoni. Uh, Advocate Vassoni. Uh, uh, he did give me a call yesterday and, uh, and this morning. Due to ill health, he could not uh, be with us. Uh, and some of the activities that, uh, that he did. And then we go on. Uh, we, we then reached the stage where uh, Advocate uh, Gerard Fisahi uh, was, uh, was also uh, in the head. Um, and uh, the, the road then proceeds to 2016, uh, where uh, I am also uh, uh, privileged uh, to, to, be, to be appointed to head this uh, very important uh, agency of government. Um, so, so we are really pleased uh, at this stage that as we mark this milestone, this has been the contribution of all uh, the heads that have come, uh, that have come before us. Now, uh, uh, what, as, as I've said that, and, and the next slide, D, uh, DG, in the interest of time, uh, I will not spend a, a lot of time on them. But I thought we'll, we'll just you know, do the highlights. Uh, over, over the years, uh, we have experienced uh, a, a trajectory that marks you know, sound uh, financial performance. So as you can see, uh, uh, there, there's those two arrows at the, at, at the top uh, just marks the increase in proclamation and you can see there that we have also included the forecast, the forecast of the, 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 the proclamations. And all of these are based on the allegations that we receive from the public, from the civil society, from government, heads of government, accounting officers, and we process them through the proclamation process uh, that gets signed off uh, through the DG's office and to the minister and ultimately to the, to the president. But I'd like to just say there that uh, that increase followed on as we reviewed and implemented our new strategy. We implemented our new structure. And as we executed on this strategy over the years, we really started seeing as we do the surveys uh, internally, we started to see the indications of the growing public confidence as the uh, organization uh, executed and of course, a related aspect, you know, those lines that you probably can't see properly, those lines, uh, they, they, they show the operational cost and the staff cost, because uh, we needed to ensure that we resource this organization so that it can execute appropriately. Uh, the next slide, uh, just a high, high level, it also still deals with the financial outcomes and uh, this one really just indicates, as the Premier was saying earlier on, uh, the business process that we've got end-to-end -end control on, from the allegations, from the investigations, from the outcomes, and pursue that process to the recovery and ensure that we recover monies that has been stolen from government. That business process we've got end-to-end -end control on and is the civil litigation process. And that civil litigation process leads to the ultimate recovery of the stolen money or money lost on corrupt basis 
and we take it back to where it belongs, which is the state, so that it could be used for appropriate ends. Um, and I, I really won't go uh, quite at length uh, with that. Uh, there's, there's various investigations that contributed to that. In the, in the past, there was a, a big investigation around the uh, Department of Social Development, as you can see on the, uh, the left-hand side. I think it will be your, your right. Uh, the the uh, social development grants, and then there was also a, a Department of uh, Correctional Services on the procurement side. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, that, that's where you find you know, the likes of uh, uh, Busasa uh, featuring. We had to investigate that part, and I mean during the, during the turn of uh, Advocate of Mayor, and we had to make sure that we execute and reach the, the results. If you can see on the on the, on the right-hand side there, there's ESCOM. Uh, minister, you'll recall that ESCOM in the previous financial year gave us the highest ever recovery in SAU where we recovered from ABB, uh, the company that acquired uh, a contract at ESCOM uh, irregularly and dare I say corruptly, uh, and we found irregularities and they immediately paid back. Uh, 1.6 uh, billion back to ESCOM, right? Uh, so we're really pleased to see that. Uh, and the other contracts, really, the investigations, you can see in the middle there, Department of Transport. Uh, uh, we also uh, did uh, the Department of Rural and Development. We did the investigations at CETA. Uh, at the top there, you can see uh, that uh, Part of what we do as we collect, uh, as we recover, uh, those who approach us and they see that they are really uh, admitting that they, they are guilty of uh, uh, this maladministration, they often approach and say they would like to pay. Uh, and there's thresholds that we use. PFMA also take uh, into consideration so that uh, uh, we take the cost benefit uh, analysis into account so that you don't spend 100 rands to recover 20 rands. So we then enter into uh, acknowledgement of debts, and we do pursue those. Uh, they might seem uh, minimal, but we pursue them so that they are paid. But look at, look at the kind of uh, 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 quantum that those uh, 56,874 acknowledgement of debts have secured. But this is part of just the work that we do. Uh, moving forward uh, now, uh, the, this is really a slide that still says uh, Honorable Minister and Deputy Ministers, Premier, DG, and colleagues, uh, we've got a whole lot of work still to do. And we are glad, Honorable Minister, that uh, in 2019 you signed off and the President signed off on the establishment of the Special Tribunal. As you can see there, there are cases pending uh, at the Special Tribunal still to be to be, uh, uh, to be put through, um, and we of course respect uh, the special tribunal, uh, uh, its independence, and we know that uh, um, uh, it, it, it's operating in accordance with its uh, own rules and regulations, but from our side as the SIU, we have to make sure that we investigate effectively, gather credible evidence so that we can present our cases there, and we have seen it. Uh, in the recent past, uh, that, uh, that, that special tribunal has really been so effective. Um, uh, the next slide really just uh, indicates uh, the number of cases that are pending there. Uh, you can see uh, on the, on, on the left-hand side, uh, it matters in the special tribunal, 127 cases uh, to date. Uh, well, this is as at the 23 June 2022. Uh, and the rent value, this is the rent value of the, the contract value uh, of the cases that have been enrolled at the special tribunal is 12.8 billion. And this is where we have found irregularities. But of course, there's going to be a process of adjudicating all these matters and ultimately uh, uh, just and equitable you know, orders will be made so that the ultimate amounts are recovered. In the middle there, you're just seeing uh, as part of the 127, it's 62 cases 
uh, that emanated from the COVID-19 investigations, and the contract value is at 2.6 billion. On the extreme right, um, we still have cases that are in the high courts, um, and those cases, um, because we have seen that uh, the, the roles in the high courts, honorable minister, are clocked, uh, and we know that we were queuing there with other litigants uh, competing for the litigation space, and that's why we are delighted that the special tribunal was, uh, was signed off. But these matters are still there, and we are still pursuing them, and you can see the value of the of the contract values there of the cases, about 59 cases uh, as at the 23rd of June, and the rent value of the, of, of the contracts that have been uh, enrolled for being set aside is about 62 billion. Now the next, uh, the next slide really um, just indicates part of our outcomes as we investigate, uh, without spending a lot of time teaching the interest of time. Uh, as we investigate, uh, again, now all of these uh, members of SIU in, the, in, in, in this room ensure that they investigate effectively, gather credible evidence, and ensure that uh, at the end we reach some outcomes. These outcomes, the one of them, of course, is to ensure that the civil litigation process to set the contract aside and recover. The one other outcome is to ensure that those officials who are found uh, to, to have misconducted themselves in the process of these uh, procurement uh, processes, for example, those uh, are also held to account. Uh, and as you can see, over the years, we've gone back and just counted a bit. Um, uh, over the years, uh, we have uh, reached up to about 43,521 cases of disciplinary processes that have been put through in the government system. <clears throat> so. Uh, part of what we do is to ensure that those, those uh, officials are, are really uh, pursued from a disciplined perspective. Uh, I need to also just uh, uh, emphasize at this stage that the consequence management part uh, is really going to continue to receive attention. Uh, you would have picked up that uh, uh, as we appear uh, in various uh, parliamentary committees, part of what we present is to ensure that we also show uh, the kind of consequence ma uh, management, uh, and those committees, of, of course, include uh, uh, SCOPA, inclu national SCOPA, and including the provincial SCOPAs, where, uh, because we operate in other provinces, so that they can also uh, be appraised of our work, and again, uh, some, of the, some of the investigations that contributed. Right, uh, the next slide, <clears throat> uh, this still just see, uh, says the, um, the, the number of uh, uh, proclamations, I won't repeat, except just to say the extreme uh, block, the extreme right block, deals with the, uh, uh, informs the, the forecast. These are the proclamations that are in the, in the process uh, of, being, of being signed off, uh, and we have seen uh, uh, Honorable Minister and DG and Deputy Minister, we have seen, uh, and DG and the President, you have seen that uh, this week, uh, there has been uh, a few proclamations last week as well uh, that, uh, that have been signed. Uh, and uh, we, we would like to still uh, say now and here that we will continue to pursue those investigations with rigor. Uh, part of our strategic focus, of course, was to ensure that we turn around those investigations as speedily as possible, produce the results, and ensure that we recover money and ensure that there's consequence management across its, uh, its spectrum, including discipline, uh, uh, prosecution, and civil recoveries. Premier, you'll be glad to know that part of that uh, 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 proclamations that are in the pipeline is the medical legal uh, proclamation. As we did the work in Gauteng and in the Eastern Cape, and of course the teams are here, um, we have uncovered, we have uncovered a whole lot of maladministration and, and, uh, and corruption. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, we also, and the, the, the national team that's dealing with the investigation in the Office of the State Attorney uh, would have also picked up some of those. So we have uncovered a whole lot in the medical legal space and government and, and, and the 
state departments and provinces, premiers right, the government is bleeding a whole lot of money in this space. So while we reached uh, consequences and results in Eastern Cape and in Gauteng, we continue to receive allegations now from other provinces. And then the team uh, put together a national proclamation, which, which then went through the process, uh, which is going to enable us now to look at this matter at a national. Uh, and, and we're really looking forward to that, to ensure that we assist in stopping that bleed uh, and holding and pursuing all those uh, to account. We found that uh, even some of the professions make themselves guilty uh, in, this, in, in this process. Uh, I'm a lawyer by training, but it's really, it's really sad to see that some of uh, my colleagues out there in the profession are also found uh, to, to really be on the wrong side of the law in this process. Medical, medical professions and other, other, uh, and other professions. Right, the, the, the next slide, uh, just quickly, deals with some of the outcomes. Uh, we reach some of the outcomes uh, by law when we find that as we investigate that there's evidence pointing to criminal offense. Uh, by law, we are required to take it to the National Prosecuting Authority uh, so that they can consider the evidence and make a decision uh, either way, whether to prosecute or not to prosecute. Of course, our preference is that they make a, a decision to prosecute. And when the decision is not made to prosecute, we'd like to understand the basis and so that we can, going forward, uh, you know, uh, plug the, the evidence gap that's there. Uh, but you can see that uh, there's quite a, a number just to you know, show you uh, from 2000. We, we, by the way, we counted from 1998 up to about 2021. There's a team that we put together to do this and analyzed the, 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 the data. Um, so we see uh, between 2006 and 2009, there's quite a, a, a huge number. And again, the contribution was that uh, Department of Social Development Grants investigation. We reached about 14,000. Uh, cases uh, that, that, were, that were referred. Um, and then in 2020, 2010 to 2013, as you can see, about 13,000 uh, and with the contribution of those social grants, and we continued to then uh, produce those, uh, those results. The next slide uh, uh, really just deals with the revenue split. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but suffice to say, um, uh, Minister, uh, Honorable Minister, we uh, we have seen that uh, the revenue uh, has increased uh, as we did our business, and this is where really we continue uh, to demonstrate, uh, uh, Auditor General, as, uh, as, as our colleagues from your office continue to robustly uh, uh, audit our institutions, we need to demonstrate that we are a going concern and that we respect the policies and processes so that when we are audited, we are able to demonstrate that we are a going concern. But we are pleased to say over the years, we have seen a trajectory uh, that really says uh, we are a sustainable uh, organization. Without wasting time, the next slide. The next slide really just says, as we do our work, uh, we do a, a, a fee for service. Uh, and uh, at this stage, uh, we expect really just uh, those uh, uh, institutions that we're investigating in uh, to honor uh, the invoices. But of course, of course the basis, the basis as I always say to my colleagues, is that, uh, you know, the CFOs in those state institutions, they ask and ask relevant questions. They say, for us to meet your invoice, what have you done? You know, uh, so what we do, and we demonstrate that by issuing those investigation reports uh, that are then submitted to all the state institutions, showing the outputs, showing the results, so that we can then talk to, uh, to, the, um, uh, to, the, to the results and the invoices. But uh, uh, as, 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 uh, as we have uh, noticed, is that uh, uh, we still need to really do a, some work in engaging those, uh, those institutions uh, to honor, to honor our, our invoices. Um, the next slide, the next slide really just also says uh, from a revenue perspective, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, we're saying 
the SIU is moving towards becoming a self-sustainable uh, service because we have seen uh, and in, in our revenue and all of those, uh, uh, the, 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 the blocks there, they just saw, they show the, the revenue versus the expenditure. And as you can see, the, the revenue uh, uh, is, above, is above the expenditure at all times. We're trying to be very conservative and, and, and considerate as we execute on our, on our business. Uh, next slide. Uh, the next few slides really um, just indicate the work, uh, the work that we did, slide uh, uh, 13 and 14. We did the work. Uh, this was the huge, huge investigation that we did in the PPEs, and we have reached quite a number of uh, uh, outcomes uh, in this. In this uh, and the, the report uh, was released by the president. It's on the, it's on the website. You can really go and, and read up there. The next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, at this stage, it's worth mentioning that there is no way that we would have achieved this without the collaborations uh, from, our, from our colleagues in this. Uh, firstly, in the ACTT space, all the law enforcement agencies. By the way, we, we also uh, uh, use various sources of information uh, as we consider our investigations. Uh, in particular, uh, we are now uh, really using the outputs of the audits, Audit General, uh, to, to inform some of the uh, considerations. Because remember, our, our, key, our key legislative mandate is to investigate maladministration, malpractice, and corruption. And maladministration, maladministration uh, is, just, is really just short of... Uh, short of corruption is not a criminal offense, but in that space, in that space we find a whole lot, a whole lot of, uh, of information that needs, and it becomes an indicator more often uh, of, 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 of corrupt activities, let me put it bluntly like that. So uh, the, the reports that we receive, they indicate uh, where there has been irregular expenditure, fruitless, wasteful, and all of that, uh, and we are not saying all of those are, 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 are corruption, but they are an indication of a system that needs to be uh, you know, reviewed. And, and more often, we find those reports very useful. We work closely uh, uh, with the Revenue Service, of course the SAPS, National Prosecuting Authority, FIC, Auditor General, and there's a whole lot of number of other uh, entities in the, AC, in the ACTT, uh, the Hawks, uh, South African Reserve Bank, Sabric. Sabric is, a, is, is an entity that deals mainly with the banks and we work closely with them. Uh, they, they, they look at the risk management space in the banks and they are able to give us information as well. And as you can see at the bottom right, ACTT, the Fusion Center has also proved to be quite important. But Honorable Minister, as we speak now, uh, the sector approach that we have taken uh, to fight corruption has really proved to be working. And most of the representatives of business, civil society in the, in the room are represented at uh, the bottom right. You can see HSACF stands for Health Sector Anti-Corruption Forum. That forum was uh, uh, launched by the president in 2019. We have seen tremendous results and we're working on producing almost like a report that we will table to show the result of that, uh, of that sector approach. The sector approach has got all the players in that sector. And the next one was the local government anti-corruption forum, and we are seeing serious, serious results from there, and we've gal galvanized the players in that sector so that they can report and we can investigate, and all the law enforcement agencies are represented there, and the other one is the uh, Infrastructure Build Anti-Corruption Forum. Uh, those are the ones that are active at the moment, and we want to perfect them, present the results, so that we can show that this sector approach uh, is really giving, giving the results. Okay, uh, I'll be quite quick now from now on. Uh, if you can just uh, give us the whole slide, please, all of, the, all of them. Right, uh, uh, Honorable Minister, we also have uh, regional and international international collaboration. If you can give us the whole slide, the Globe Network is the, under the 
the, 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 the United Nations, we, we participate there uh, and, and we find good value in the SADC space. Uh, on the left hand side, number two is SADC. Uh, SIU is currently the chair of the SADC Anti Corruption Committee, uh, and the next one would be Namibia. Uh, we'll be handing over in August, and we have, uh, we have really played a, a good role there. Uh, we have just been admitted to the International Association of Anti Corruption Authorities, and we are privileged that SIU has been made one of the four uh, vice presidents, uh, and uh, we are now focusing on coordinating the Africa work uh, of that uh, association. The presidency is Hong Kong, and we work very well with all the colleagues in Africa. And in the middle there is the, uh, the African uh, Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities. Uh, it's been operating for a while, but uh, last month some of our colleagues uh, attended. We were included uh, as part of a member. And we also, in the middle there is the French flag. Uh, Honorable Minister, as you would know, We've got a, quite a good collaboration with the, with the, with, with the French, uh, collaborated on cyber training and some of the forensic investigative training, and it's, it's really proving uh, worth, uh, worthwhile. Uh, and then there's a Commonwealth uh, uh, Association of Anti-Corruption uh, uh, Authorities, which we are a member of, and of course the United Nations Office on Drugs uh, and, uh, and Crime. Uh, the next slide, of course, is really just the, the key enablers. Uh, we appreciate the, the support from the executive, and we work through a particular legislative framework, the funding and the resources that we have built up. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the next slide, please. Uh, of course, the, uh, we, work, um, uh, we appreciate the presidency, support National Treasury, uh, Department of Justice and uh, Constitutional Development. Uh, so, so we would like to ensure that we continue. Uh, and of course, uh, we couldn't really put all of those in one slide. JCPS, ACTT, and the others will continue to work uh, within that framework. Uh, on the legislative framework, next slide, uh, we have seen that the SIU Act really gives us uh, the, the, the powers that we require, but of course there's some work that we are, work we are doing there to ensure that uh, it's appropriately improved. Uh, we have seen the significant impact of the special tribunal and, of course, the collaboration with other entities. On the resources side, the next slide, uh, of course, we continue to ensure that we develop uh, the existing staff and acquisition of tool sets, including data analytics. Honorable Minister, we have seen, uh, while we have ensured that the resources that we have are well trained, but we continue to also just observe uh, we have realized that uh, we needed to enhance, and this has been a realization in the ACTT, uh, the chair of uh, ACTT is here, that we require forensic accountants uh, in terms of ensure that we beef up our investigations. Because as we go into those state entities and in the private entities, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the balance sheet or the accounting statements, some of them can fill up this, this, uh, this stage and boxes, so we require the knowledge of forensic, uh, forensic accountants to help us go through that, but we are busy uh, 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 ensuring that we've got the, the, the resources. And of course, in the middle there, the data analytics. Uh, this, is the, this, is the, this is the way the world is going, and we want to ensure that we are also not left behind. Uh, I think uh, the, the, on, on the right hand side, I, I did say uh, forensic accounting. And that the next slide is really around the funding model that we are continuing to, to ensure that the funding model meets with our requirement of the business. Uh, the, next, the next slide, which is the last one really, uh, is what the future holds. Uh, Honorable Minister, Honorable DMs, and uh, my colleagues, we would like to ensure, uh, Honorable Premier, that as we continue uh, to work with the provinces at a national level, that we continue being a recognized as the state's preferred and trusted anti-corruption and forensic investigation and litigation agency. Uh, Premier, you have hit the nail on the head, uh, and it has been, Honorable Minister, our finding that as we go, based on the proclamations into state institutions, we often find that some work has been done by the forensic investigating firms, but you, we often find that those investigations are not conclusive. And there's sometimes lines there that says, refer this to law enforcement agencies and so on. So 
we would, we are, we, we would like to continue to being preferred so that uh, we find uh, a one-stop shop uh, in, this, in this house, in this, in this unit. As we investigate, we are conclusive, we can refer for, 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 for disciplinary, we can refer for litigation, we can refer for prosecution, we can recover, and we can even uh, uh, recommend a systemic improvement because part of uh, our work is to see the improvement in the, in the administration. The prevention side, Honorable Minister, would really this, this year, and I know we've said it even in the ACTT space, we would like to up the game on the prevention side uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we, 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 as we up that game and uh, we prevent and we detect and make sure that corruption, maladministration doesn't happen, of course the, the consequence thereof is that we would see the reactive side uh, also uh, uh, diminishing. But we, we would do that by employing a whole lot of activities, uh, including the analysis of the data, the data analytics, uh, which uh, uh, we will not say much uh, today, but we are really going to show the outputs of this data analytics such that we also employ predictive analytics so that we are able to assist government and saying these are the corruption and maladministration vulnerabilities, exposures, Let's be proactive and put controls in place. Uh, having read also what the, the AG reports are saying, ensure that uh, the controls are adequate, and by so doing, we would really improve uh, the, the environment. Uh, Multi-agency collaboration, I've already said that, and the digitization. The world is, the world is moving. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, we digitize. You know? uh, uh, so, so, so there's a whole lot of work that we are doing to ensure that uh, uh, we don't stay behind. Uh, on uh, DG, as you said, the criminals use the, the five services. We have seen that even in this space, they continue to, to just, I don't know if they've got research houses, uh, these this crooks and criminals, but the way they, they are so sophisticated, uh, we need to ensure that we are a step ahead. We need to ensure that we are a step ahead uh, and ensure that uh, we meet them, uh, even, uh, even beat them at this game. Uh, this is the last, but of course, I need to just uh, once more thank, the next slide is really thanking uh, the, the members of this uh, unit, the Special Investigating Unit, uh, uh, without really their, their continued commitment, uh, we would not have reached where we are, and once more, Minister, uh, a, a, a big thank you uh, to you, the Honorable Minister, the Deputy Ministers, uh, the Presidency, the DG Premier, and uh, DG Injustice. Uh, this is the end of my short uh, uh, message. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Advocate. I imagine the day that will allow you to give your, your long message. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for this, uh, you know, uh, comprehensive presentation. There's a video we're supposed to see, but I suggest we jump it. We'll have a look at it once the minister is done, just before uh, the vote of thanks. Let me take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to invite the Deputy Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, responsible for correctional services, Honorable Particular Holomisa at Dilizin Taba to introduce the minister. Program Director, Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, our Premier in Gauteng, my colleague, Deputy Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Honorable Chairperson of SCOPA, Judge President of the Special Tribunal, Head of Special Investigating Unit, Head of the Hawks, Auditor General, NPA, Public Protector, and other heads of Chapter 9 institutions, the Director General in the Presidency and other Directors General, senior officials of government, the family of the SIU, 
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mulweni. Oh, I thought it was a pendulum and a laugh. <clears throat> Program director, it is common cause that uh, corruption has an adverse effect on the economy. It is a pandemic which, when not vigorously kept, impedes job creation and service delivery, affecting the poor most severely by depriving them of basic services. There must therefore be serious consequences for those engaging in corrupt activities. One of the measures leading to such desired consequences is the establishment of strong institutions capable of acting against those involved in corruption, regardless of their, niche, of their station in life. The SIU is one such institution which has a track record, as we have seen, of rooting out corruption in the public sector. No country can flourish, flourish if corruption becomes endemic within both the public and private sectors. When President Nelson Mandela at Dalbung led efforts to establish the SIU by signing Proclamation R24 of 1997, he wanted to assist the country to avoid decay of sound uh, governance and to enable investigation of anyone suspected of having undermined due processes with the intention to enrich themselves and harm the interests of the state. When the SIU was established, in its existence was meant to be of a temporary duration, but the need to solidify the fight against corruption uh, in, the, in the state it became necessary that it be of a permanent nature. The work of the SIU throughout the years has become one of the strong pillars in the justice system. Together with Minister Lamola and uh, Deputy Minister Jeffrey, you are also seized with the task of strengthening the justice system to enable institutions such as the NPA and SIU to perform their responsibilities without hindrance. I also want to take this opportunity to express my unequivocal support to the work of the SIU led by Advocate Mutibi. Continue pursuing with vigor those who are corrupt. Our resources, once resources they looted, are recovered and they are arrested and sentenced accordingly. The Department of Correctional Services will provide them with accommodation in our <coughs> overcrowded in our overcrowded cells and proceed to rehabilitate them so that their offending character could be reformed. Back to the task I have been given of introducing the keynote speaker. Uh, the keynote speaker is Mr. is the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services. Ronald Ozi Lamula. As we all know, he's an admitted attorney of the High Court in South Africa. He holds a number of degrees, notably the LLB, two Masters in Law degrees. He's an advocate for justice, transparency, and anti-corruption. He has worked tirelessly to reverse the weakening of the state institutions tasked with enforcing the rule of law. He continues to lead the Ministry of Justice and Correctional Services consistent with the mandate of the Sixth Administration of fighting the scourge of corruption and creating a conducive environment for economic growth and attracting foreign direct investment to the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of inviting to address you the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Ozi Lamula to deliver the keynote address on the occasion, marking the 25 years of existence of the Special Investigating Unit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, Inkosi, uh, particularly Holomisa, for such a colorful introduction. The program director, who is also the director general of the Department of Justice and um, Constitutional Development, the Deputy Minister of Justice and uh, Constitutional Development, Mr. John Jeffrey, the Premier of uh, Houting, Mr. David Makura, the Chairperson of uh, SCOPA, Mr. Bulela Shengwa, we are glad you are here with us to 
do proper oversight here. The president of the special tribunal, Judge uh, Madiba, the head of the special investigating unit, Advocate uh, Andy Mutibi, the acting public protector, Advocate uh, Kolega Kalega, Auditor General South Africa, Mr. Kani Maluleke, the National Deputy Director of uh, Public Prosecution, and also a former head of the SIU, Advocate Pinky Mahatla, the DG in the Presidency, Ms. Baleni, DG for Public Service, Ms. Makasi, the head of the Hawks, Advocate uh, Godfrey Levia, the former head of the Special Investigating Unit, uh, Advocate Hufmeyer, and uh, other heads that I might not have uh, seen. All the stakeholders um, working with the SIU in the fight um, against uh, corruption and maladministration, NGOs, people from the private sector, and the community at large. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. I am um, assigned by the president to deliver the speech on his behalf. So if I insult you, I'm insulting you on his behalf. <laughs> One of the effective ways to make government um, corruption proof is to have institutions that will con prevent corruption where it has happened to investigate and ensure that there's consequence management. 25 years ago, on this day, the then President of the Republic of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, set out a reliable institution, the Special Investigating Unit, to tackle and eliminate corruption in the public sector. The result of this institution speaks for themselves. The corrupt have been dealt with accordingly, arrested, prosecuted, and sentenced. Monies have been recovered, and it has been seen that the proceeds of crime cannot pay. This was seen in action through various matters that have gone through our courts. We are grateful that the President Nelson Mandela was visionary and signed Proclamation R24 of 1997, authorizing the formation of this giant special investigating unit. He prevented corruption from spreading, and it is with great sense of pride and pleasure that we commemorate the 25th anniversary of the SIU today. We equally celebrate his telling work in tackling corruption across all spheres of government. The SIU has evolved rapidly in recent years and spared no effort in bringing perpetrators to book and recovering the proceeds of their misdeeds, sending a strong message against corruption as a deterrent and as a preventative measure. The SIU has achieved significant recoveries through combining quality investigations with civil litigation. Between 2013 and 2021, the SIU has recovered public money and assets to the value of 2.6 billion rands, set aside contracts to the value of 18 billion rands, and referred matters worth 81 billion rands for civil litigation in the High Court and the Special Tribunal for Civil Litigation. To date, the SIU is one of government's success stories in the fight against corruption. When COVID-19 hit us during the first quarter of 2020, procurement of goods and services was relaxed for the government to respond with speed and with agility. Unfortunately, rogue business people and some government officials saw this relaxation of procurement processes as an opportunity to enrich themselves through corrupt means and undermining government response. President Sir Ramaphosa authorized the unit through Proclamation R23 of 2020 to investigate procurement of personal protective equipment in the state institution. The SIU had diligently executed the task and stolen state money was recovered and continues to be recovered to date. As we speak, the SIU has enrolled 48 matters worth 2.2 billion rands, 
related to the COVID-19 procurement corruption and maladministration at the special tribunal. In total, the corruption busting agency had enrolled 119 cases with more than 12.8 billion rands at the special tribunal. It is worth noting that senior government officials across the length and breadth of our country are facing criminal charges relating to the PPE procurement. The setting up and subsequent operation of the special tribunal in 2019 by the government has made it possible for the SIU to, to expedite the recovery of state monies and state assets lost through negligent and corrupt means, thereby re restoring public trust in the work of the state. The special tribunal adjudicated on matters that the SIU institutes for civil litigation relief following conclusions of investigations. The SIU no longer has to queue at the high courts with other litigants and experience delays, which made the recovery of stolen money more difficult as culprits had enough time to hide or dissipate the money and assets earned through corrupt means. Through the special tribunal, the SIU can now quickly recover monies and assets lost by state institutions through irregular and corrupt means as compared to the high court's processes and hold those responsible for the loss accountable. The SIU can also request relief in the form of preventing further losses to the state. In just under three years, the special tr tribunal has adjudicated cases referred to it by the special investigating unit amounting to 8.6 billion rands in unlawful contracts. One of the matters that were finalized includes the 172 million rands PPE tender that was irregularly awarded. The tribunal declared the tender invalid and unlawful and ordered 158 million rands to be paid back into the fiscus. Furthermore, the tribunal ordered that those involved must be blacklisted from doing business with the state. The outcome of this matter should serve as a deterrent to corrupt individuals and maladministrators in state institutions and the role players in the private sector. Between 2018 and 2022, the president has signed 94 proclamations, authorizing the unit to investigate corruption and maladministration allegations in the affairs of state institutions. The number of proclamations are expected to increase as the more than 40 proclamation requests are being processed. Sometimes I get shocked when I see the, the files coming through my office. I usually ask um, Advocate MTV if he still has the capacity to handle these matters because of the sheer volume of work that comes through. And unfortunately, this is the life that um, society see through some of the administrative failures and service delivery failures in our communities. Given the successes of the unit and other factors, we have observed that there is a need to accelerate resourcing and the capacitation of the SIU and other similar anti-corruption agencies to enable us to conquer the scourge of corruption. As government, we want to do away with the perception that we are soft on corruption, particularly amongst our ranks. The SIU must continue to do its job without any fear, favor, or prejudice. They must continue to follow evidence. I know that um, sometimes we are accused, the president accused of um, using the SIU as some kind of a hired gun. I must use this opportunity to state that the president does not use the SIU as a hired gun. The SIU follows evidence. The SIU follows allegations that comes to them. The SIU is guided by the law. It's not guided by the executive, either myself, the president, or any minister. They are guided by the allegations that falls on their table to investigate, to follow them, and to follow the money. They are not doing so at the behest of the president. We are just victims of the legislations that we have to process this 
proclamations. We have to sign. Someone must sign. The president also has to sign for the proclamation to be legal. But it's not that the president is instructing the SIU that go and follow this one. The president just says the proclamation is for you to investigate these allegations. Let them be tested. It also gives those that are alleged an opportunity to clarify themselves. In some of the matters, they get clarified that indeed there was no wrongdoing. We know that this work, as the Premier has said, is not a nice work. It's painful. It involves lots of sacrifice, particularly amongst the investigators, the employees of the SIU. At some stage, we had to approve them getting protection because those that benefit from this maladministration, they are ruthless. We want to condemn such kind of behavior in society and from anyone that is being investigated for targeting the investigators of the SIU. We also condemn the threatening killing of whistleblowers who provide inf information to the SIU. If there is anything that you can do to prevent investigation, it's not to commit the crime. It's not to kill the whistleblower or the investigator because they did not commit the alleged maladministration. The SIU represents a real opportunity to make a difference in the fight against corruption, continuously working to protect the ideals for which a countless number of people sacrifice their lives for. In the constitutional court judgment, in the matter between South African Association of Personal Injury Lawyers and the Department of Health and three others, the late former Chief Justice Chakalsin said the following, and I quote, corruption and maladministration are inconsistent with the rule of law and the fundamental values of our constitution. They undermine the constitutional commitment to human dignity, the achievement of equality, and the advancement of human rights and freedoms. They are the antithesis of an open, accountable, and democratic government required by the constitution. If allowed to go unchecked and unpunished, they will pose a serious threat to our democratic state. So this corruption is also counter-revolutionary. Those that are fighting back against the work of the SIU, the NPA, the Hawks, must know that they are not running a democratic project. Because the democratic project that Nelson Mandela envisaged was a corrupt, free, democratic project, which we must all defend for the benefit and for the future of our children and for the future of our country, the Republic of South Africa. Looking at the outcomes of the SIU investigation, it is evident that members of the SIU take the words of former Chief Justice to heart in the execution of their duties, steadfastly guarding the public press from pillaging and looting. As the Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, this gives me comfort that there are those who are the guardian angels of the peace of our country and they are prepared to pursue justice at all costs. As part of celebrating the 25th anniversary, the look and feel of the SIU has been refreshed to resemble a wheel of justice turning, and the payoff line has been changed from pause to strike against corruption to striking against corruption in order to reflect the new strategic direction of South Africa's anti-corruption, forensic investigation, and the litigation agents. And this is in line with the vision envisaged by the president in his first state of the nation address, where he wanted to strengthen all the institutions of our constitutional democracy to be able to do their job in line with the constitution without any fear or favor or without any form of interference from anyone. My message to the SIU investigators, legal and support team, and advocate Mtibi is that continue to strike against corruption. When you strike fear to the corrupt, they will resist from engaging in their activities, knowing that they will be caught and punished, that there will be no impunity. I'm encouraged that advocate Mtibi and this collective are always looking at the innovative methods to fight the scourge of corruption 
which if allowed to manifest, can collapse the fiscus of this country. The culture of impunity and corruption where resources meant to create a better lives for our people through shenanigans channeled through unscrupulous characters, working hand in love with government officials, must cease to occur in the public space. In the public service, the effect of this has been laid bare. We have been robbed of capacity to respond to other pressing matters in the country due to money lost. Today, we are plummeted in the dark due to the lack of reliable electricity supply. Is in this a result of an invisible hand of corruption? Our people can also not adequately shape their future. They are deprived of water, access to roads, health care, and other basic necessities that government committed to roll out as the money for such services get lost somewhere. This is a clear demonstration that we can never reach our full potential as a country, as long as corruption continues to manifest. Program Director, amid all these challenges, institutions like the SIU continue to bring hope to our people. They make our resolve to fight and eliminate corruption practical. It was Nelson Mandela who said the following, our hope for the future depends also on our resolution as a nation in dealing with the scourge of corruption. We will continue to strengthen the cooperation between the SIU, the NPA, and other law enforcement agencies to enable criminal prosecutions from the investigations that are emanating from the special investigating units processes, as stated by the Honorable Premier of the province of Gauteng. We want to encourage the SIU to continue striking the corrupt without any fear. We have our full support. We can't allow the entrenchment of corruption in our society. And we cannot be ruled by those that do not want to respect the rule of law. The rule of law must reign supreme and the constitution must continue to be our guide. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Minister. Um, the, there are media houses here. I wanted to, to assist them with some headlines for tomorrow. Uh, uh, corruption is uh, counter-revolutionary, says Ronald Lamola. So it's a headline. I'm sure you can sell a, a good number of... Uh, of, of, of copies of the newspapers for, for tomorrow. But thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. And I think in line with what also the Premier was saying, Premier, you need to help us uh, with exclusive books to source that book on fighting corruption is dangerous. I have not seen it in the shelves. I know the likes of General Libya, um, you know, Public Protector, Advocate Mutibi. So they can make money, in fact, to bring that book to exclusive books. There are a lot of people who really will need to carry it around with them. Uh, me included as well. <laughs> so, so, so we need that book. But Minister, thank you very much, I think, for, for that presentation on behalf of, uh, of, of the President. Um, I'll ask that we just maybe briefly, I'm advised that video is not too long. Um, uh, I also nearly committed, uh, you know, um, career limiting uh, action. I didn't uh, earlier recognize the presence of the chair of uh, the highly esteemed committee, portfolio committee uh, on justice and correctional services. Honorable Bulelani, gratitude, Makwanisha. We, we, we recognize your presence. And, uh, yes. Uh, yes. So, so, so I'll ask that we fly that video before we take that next item, say documentary on the SIU. Now, the SIU has already proven to all of us that they are able to do their job. They are on top of their game. Since its launch 25 years ago, the SIU's mission has been to strike against serious malpractice, corruption and maladministration in state institutions and to root out misconduct which may seriously harm the interests of the public. 
Giving it added teeth, the SIU is able to institute civil proceedings in any court of law or a special tribunal in its own name. The SIU has had resounding success in clamping down on corruption and maladministration in various government departments and state-owned entities such as ESCOM, the Department of Health, the Department of Social Development, the SABC and Transnet to name but a few. From 2013 to 2021, the SIU has recovered cash and assets worth over 2.6 billion rand, set aside contracts worth more than 18 billion rand, referred matters worth over 81 billion rand for civil litigation, and prevented financial losses of more than 4 billion rand. The first thing to remember, which is very important, is that the SIU is regulated by an Act of Parliament. So the SIU's investigations must be conducted in accordance with what the Act provides for. The SIU's mission and vision, maybe starting with the vision, we want to be the state's preferred and trusted forensic investigation and litigation agents. Investigations, they start off by us receiving allegations from the public or from government, from anyone. We assess those allegations, we ensure that uh, they, they fit our mandate. Inside the Ratlo local municipality um, offices here where the special investigating unit just moved in uh, moments ago, of course it's understood um, it's a raid around 25 million rand uh, PPE tender. In December, the SIU submitted its final report on its investigation into COVID-related contracts. As a result, 45 matters with a combined value of 2.1 billion have been enrolled with a special tribunal. The SIU has referred 224 government officials for disciplinary action and has referred 386 cases for possible prosecution by the NPA. The Special Investigating Unit's final report into the Digital Vibe saga has revealed damning findings against former Health Minister Dr. Zwelim Kize, his family and close associates. First prize is to prevent corruption and maladministration and malpractice from happening, rather than being reactive. Uh, of course, the reactive part will probably always be there, but we need to do it effectively, investigate effectively, speedily, get the consequence management implemented, recover the monies, prosecute, discipline. The logo itself says I'm poised to strike um, against corruption. And there's a snake and it's a venomous and very deadly snake. It simply says you, you do corruption, we, we are, we're going to follow you. Thank you, thank you very much. I see Advocate uh, Mukhatle, you, you are the lead, the, uh, but you are now the deputy national of the, but, but, but it's good because the Premier is saying the problem now is with the prosecution. Maybe that's the point they wanted to make, SIU wanted to cartoon you that the problem is, <laughs> that the problem now is with the NPA. They, they have done the work, but, but we'll sort it out. I mean, the NPA over the past two years, uh, finance has been very generous. In fact, I thought I saw the DG of Treasury here. Yeah. Uh, is, did I see? Did, he's not here. Acting DG of Treasury? Huh? No, he has, they, I mean, Treasury has been good to the NPA in the past two years. They gave them a billion the other year, and last year gave an extra billion. And the likes of SIU, Advocate Mutivi, they can only, you know, dream of something of that level. You know? <laughs> but we are going to the MTEF who will be making a case and say, you know, they are no longer poised. Treasury was discouraged as well by the motto of being posed. You know, now they are striking. I'm sure we can get, even if it's just half a billion, you know. <laughs> so, okay. Yes, yeah, fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I will ask the Deputy Minister, Honourable John Jeffries, to come and give a vote of thanks. Deputy Minister. Uh, thanks, uh, DG. Um, distinguished guests and friends, um, I won't list everyone. It's been done. It's been done already. 
It's both a pleasure and a privilege to be able to say a few words of thanks, not only to everyone who's made today's anniversary event possible, but also in particular to everyone who has in whatever way contributed to or played a part in the success of the SIU over the past 25 years. I did a bit of a walk down memory lane and had a look at the SIU's 2003 annual report. Not only does one find a very much younger looking and considerably less gray Willy Hofmeyer, but one also finds an institution which from the get-go was set to become a powerhouse in the fight against corruption. In that annual report, it said that since the establishment of the unit in August 2021, the SIU was on a course that resulted in the stabilization of the unit, the development of a strategic plan, galvanizing the members around the unit's vision of becoming a world-class anti-corruption agency, significantly building internal capacity, a shift towards greater operational impact and outcomes, and building lasting cooperation with other departments and agencies. It set out to become a world-class anti-corruption agency, and, and today we can proudly say that that is exactly what the SIU has become. As the state's only anti-corruption, forensic investigation, and litigation agency in one, the SIU has become a vital player in our country's fight against corruption. The, the SIU has also said it was poised to strike, and strike against corruption it most certainly has, and it's good to see that it's now on the logo as striking against corruption. Only yesterday we read about how the SIU, together with the Hawks and the NPA, contributed to the arrest of former employees of the digital tech firm ABB Group in connection with the alleged uh, 2.2 billion fraudulent contracts at ESCOM. We also read about how the SIU was granted a preservation order on the multi-million rand luxury home and furniture of a former National Lotteries Commission Board Chairperson. And many other highlights have been given of the SIU's uh, work. Distinguished guests, no institution magically becomes a success on its own. It becomes successful because of the people who contribute to it and who ensure that an institution thrives. And I want to commend the people behind the striking COBRA. As we also celebrate the unveiling of the SIU's new corporate identity, I want to wish it all the success. May the successes and the achievements of the past 25 years lay the foundation for the next 25 years to come. And may the SIU go from strength to strength. In that uh, 2003 annual report I mentioned earlier, Willy Hofmeyer is quoted as saying, and I, and I quote, corruption will never be entirely eliminated, but it's naive to believe that nothing can be done about it. Now, that was admittedly 19 years ago uh, in a different time, and unfortunately, corruption has become far more prevalent. So I think it's not just saying that um, we it's naive to believe nothing can be done about it. We must fight against corruption. We must do all we can to combat corruption, because if we do not, it will destroy our beloved country. We know today, as we did then, that the SIU is making a significant contribution in the fight against corruption. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. I'll ask Kaiser to come and give some announcement. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, just a uh, few announcements. When we f leave here, because it's the end of the event, the Dignitaries that are here on stage and the heads of institutions that are with us must go to the holding room. They will be served lunch there. The rest of us, we have to go to the dining hall to, to, your, to our left. And while, while, once we do that, the, the, the band will be giving us some music. And then, but before they do that, the media has requested for the minister and advocate Mutibi to remain here so that they can do interviews with them. Thank you very much.
th thank you very much. And I'll still ask uh, Auditor General when they want you to this other room where they say it's a holding room, it's not really to force your report on us, <laughs> but, but it's to discuss how we can assist with the material irregularity <laughs> and, you know, and, and the public protector as well. We, we are not trying to discuss any case that you are busy with, but we want to see how we can facilitate General Libya helping you and others. So if you don't come, is at your own peril. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You have been a good uh, audience. Thank you.